You know, ever since I was a little kid, I've always really enjoyed big adventures. As a young child, I would wake up at 6am on Saturdays, just so that I could catch the children's programming block on TV, which would air anime such as Pokemon. Watching a 10 year old kid set out into the wide world with nothing but a name to become the greatest Pokemon trainer was something I just couldn't miss. The same applies to Digimon, which I enjoyed even more cause the adventure was them traversing a world in which they knew nothing about, which made it all the more exciting. This love for adventure stories has stayed with me all the way into adulthood, so when a friend of mine recommended me a certain space opera a few years ago, I was very interested. That very show is what I'm going to be talking about today. So ladies and gentlemen, please take your seat and strap yourself in, as we're gonna go on an intergalactic journey with the Galaxy Express 3-9. Galaxy Express 3-9 is a 113 episode long space adventure that aired from 1978 to 1981. It was produced by studio Toei Animation and Nobutaka Nishisawa was the chief director on the project. He's also worked as the chief director on the series Slam Dunk. Galaxy Express 3-9 is based on a shonen manga by the same name written by Leiji Matsumoto that started publishing in 1977 and kept publishing alongside the series up until 1981. Leiji Matsumoto was inspired by the novel Night on the Galactic Railroads by Kenji Miyazawa to make this story about a kid traveling through different galaxies in a steam-powered train. The synopsis for this show goes something like this. In the distant future, humanity found a way to live forever by purchasing mechanical bodies, but this way to immortality is extraordinarily expensive. An impoverished boy, Tetsuro Hoshino, desires to purchase a pass on the Galaxy Express 3-9, a train that travels throughout the universe, because it is said that at the end of the line, those aboard can obtain a mechanical body for free. When Tetsudo's mother is gunned down by the villainous machine man hybrid Count Mecha, however, all seems lost. But then, Tetsudo is saved from certain death by the mysterious Metel, a tall woman with blonde hair and a striking resemblance to his mother. She gives him a pass to the Galaxy Express under one condition, that they travel together. Thus, Tetsuro begins his journey across the universe to many unique planets and thrilling adventures, in hopes of being able to attain that which he desires most. First off, let's talk a little bit about the characters. I'm not going to talk about all of them, as there are quite a few characters in this show, but I'm going to talk about the ones we see the most. Now, Tetsuro and Metal are obviously the main characters, and it's through them, and more specifically Tetsuro, that we get to experience the many smaller stories and main story that makes up this show. Tetsuro is our innocent main character with a big heart and strong sense of justice. Along his travels, he learns of other struggles and the many problems that the universe is facing. This challenges his idea that getting a mechanical body and becoming immortal will make him happy. Acting as a sort of guide on this journey is the mysterious woman Metel, who saved Tetsuro. She is very secretive and doesn't really open up about herself, so for the majority of the show, Tetsuro doesn't really know what her motives for joining him on this journey are. This makes us as viewers not entirely sure whether we can trust her or not, and that sense of unease is very important to enjoy this long journey. Apart from them, the only other constantly recurring characters are the Conductor and the Galaxy Express itself. And while their roles aren't very big, and mostly just show up at the beginning and end of the episodes, they do still serve as key parts to the main plot. The Conductor is the main crew on the Galaxy Express, and is the one who checks the passengers tickets, and makes sure that the train stays on schedule. He tries to help Tetsuro and Metal where he can, but at the end of the day, he is still bound by the rules of the Galaxy Express, so how he can help them is quite limited. The Galaxy Express itself is also an interesting character, and I'm not just saying that because it's got a sort of pseudo-personality programmed in. The Galaxy Express is the catalyst for the entire journey, and is the binding point for the entire story. Its importance cannot be understated, and because of that, I hereby declare that the Galaxy Express is in fact best girl in this show. Sorry, Mattel. Now, that's enough about the characters. Let's move on to the visuals. Probably the first thing that will pop out at you if you're not familiar with Leiji Matsumoto works would be the character designs 
which were done by Shigeru Kogawa and Shingo Araki. The tall, skinny and frail looking female designs in particular is what really stands out the most. It's a design choice that can definitely look a bit odd when you see it for the first time, and it was something that I kind of struggled with at first when I was trying to get into the show, but after some time, I got used to it, and now I actually really like this design. The only real complaint I have with it is that all the women in this show tend to look very much the same. It can make you a bit lost sometimes when trying to recall characters when they all look the same. As for the male designs, they are a bit more varied, but not much. Take Tetsuro for example. His design is more round and goofy with small eyes. He very much looks like a cartoon character, but it makes him stand out from the rest. And I kinda like this design for a kid. Probably because I've seen way too many young teens in anime with 12 packs and pointy hair at this point. Overall, I like the designs in this show, because they are very unique. You can easily pick out a Leiji Matsumoto work from a lineup. The only downside I have is that the designs get repetitive, and across the many other adaptations of his works, you start to get even more characters that look exactly like each other. So the designs are good, but what then about the animation? Well, in short, it's not great. There are some glimpses of good animation every once in a while, but as a whole, it's pretty subpar, sadly. Very limited motions and lots of still frames are to be had throughout the entire series. I will give them a little bit of slack since this show is from the late 70s, early 80s, and since it's 113 episodes, but even for its time, there are shows out there that have better animation than this. Akage no An and Future Boy Conan are two examples I can think of off the top of my head that came out at around the same time. Those prove that it is possible to do better in terms of animation, even though it's an old show. But that's enough about that. Let's move on to my thoughts about the show. What I really like about this show is how despite it being an episodic show, the events that take place during the course of this series all plays into Tetsuro's growth as a person. It shapes the way he views the world and challenges his idea that getting a mechanical body and eternal life will make him happy and improve his life. Because along this journey, Tetsuro learns of other suffering, and that his own situation on Earth is only a small part of a much bigger problem. This all ties into a much bigger conflict towards the end of the series. All this helps making the journey feel like it actually meant something, rather than just being a simple trip from point A to point B. Even if it does take a while before you start to see that all these different situations on the different planets actually does have an effect on Tetsuro that doesn't just disappear once the episode is over. Another thing that I really like is how they tell a story on such a grand scale as this. Because with how Tetsuro is traveling all over the universe, from planet to planet, from galaxy to galaxy, and witnessing everything from personal struggles to all-out intergalactic war, Galaxy Express is really good at keeping things fairly grounded for its scale, especially when it comes to the planets and galaxies they visit. This is done by essentially portraying a planet like you would a city or a country. This narrower view of the planets allows the story to focus more on presenting a single problem that has to be explored, and allows them to spend less time information dumping to flesh out the entire planet. Remember, for the most part, they only have a single episode to get through arriving at a new planet, being introduced to it, being caught up in some conflict and exploring that for a little bit, before they have to return to the Galaxy Express and set off for a new planet. The final thing I want to touch on here is how Galaxy Express 3.9 is tied together with a lot of Leiji Matsumoto's other works. This is more a positive if you're a fan of his works in general. We see characters from other works show up like Captain Harlock from Space Pirate Captain Harlock and Emeraldus from Queen Emeraldus, just to name a few. I just wanted to highlight this because I think it's really cool how Leiji Matsumoto made a conscious effort to connect most of his different works in the same universe. Now, while I do think there are a lot of positives, that doesn't mean there aren't things that could improve. Like I said earlier in the video, Galaxy Express 3.9 is a space adventure, and a long one at that. It's also an episodic show, apart from the odd two-part stories thrown in here and there. This does mean that the show can feel a little bit slow at times, and some of the episodes aren't that great. For example, the episode called Armored Planet, where everything is encased in armor so strong that nothing can break it. It's not an awful episode, but there is quite a bit of convenience at play. Like for example, how the only thing that can break this unbreakable armor is the gun that can destroy anything. Because of course it can. But plot convenience is something you're just gonna have to get used to with Leiji Matsumoto stories. Because for as good as he is at coming up with interesting concepts and very grounded drama despite the scale of the stories, he does tend to resort to some plot convenience from time to time. 
For the most part, it's okay as it's very minor, but every once in a while, some situations can feel like they're resolving themselves because they have to, to make the story progress, rather than because something significant happened. If you've seen the original Space Battleship Yamato, you'll know what I'm talking about. Other than those two, I don't really have any huge issues with the story. The characters, and in particular Tetsuro, can get a little annoying at times, but he is a kid and does dumb stuff that a kid would do because they don't fully understand the seriousness of the situation always. So I think it's still within the character to act the way he does. But you might get annoyed at him a few times throughout the show. Galaxy Express 3.9 is like I said in the beginning, a show that should be right up my alley. As a fan of adventures, seeing one with a bit more adult themes added to it should make for a really enjoyable show. And I think it does. It is by no means a perfect show, as it does have some weaker episodes over its 113 episode runtime, but when I sum it all up, I can say that it had more fun and enjoyable episodes than boring episodes. I don't think this is for everyone, especially since it's so long, but if you don't want to sit down and watch 100 plus episodes, then you can watch the movie instead. Galaxy Express is a fun space adventure with a little more mature focus, so if that sounds like something you're interested in, then you should definitely give it a shot. So those were my thoughts on Galaxy Express 3.9. It was an epic space adventure that ended up being a lot deeper than I thought it was going to be. I highly enjoyed watching it, and I hope this video is going to help encourage others to give it a try as well. It might be long, but it is worth it. I really like Leiji Masamoto stories, and I definitely want to make more videos on his works in the future. I might even make a video on the spiritual successor to Galaxy Express 3.9 in the near future as well. But anyways, now I'm just rambling. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, then don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more anime-related content from the anime top scholar himself. Peace!